Hi everyone, Mike McConville here, Stratford, Ontario, Canada for String Tech Workstations. We have a 1971 Fender Precision Bass in uh, remarkable condition, really. I mean, these are original frets. So I did dress them and buff them out to a mirror shine. They were pretty cruddy. And, uh, we're just getting ready to plug it in. So we plugged it in and this is what we get. Okay, well that's not good. That's a bit of a disappointment. So we'll open it up and have a look. Obviously something's going on in there. This has obviously never been opened. I could tell by the way the screws came out and that uh, pick guard kind of popped off cleanly. It's most likely some type of grounding problem because this thing is wiggling. That's probably part of it. Yeah, so those pots need to be tightened. Both of these pots are just wobbling. So we're going to start there. We'll snug those down and then we'll plug it in and check it again. Yeah, it's a perfect press fit there. Okay, moment of truth. Here we go. Did this work or not? And that was obviously it. Now you can hear those pots are a little scratchy, but man, these are original pots. <laughs> not going to change this. So we'll spray those pots and throw those knurled knobs back on. Well, people use the term mint condition much too loosely these days when it comes to guitars. I'll let you draw your own conclusion. I'm going to point out the most minute details. So first of all, a little bit of lacquer wear right in here. Look at the rest of the finish. It is nothing short of phenomenal. I think there's one little pock out of the finish here from a string change, I would think. Up here on the horn, one little pock right there. Uh, I'm not too sure. Oh yeah, a couple of little tiny spots here. And the lower horn uh, these are the original screws, so before I cover this up, uh, I just wanted you to see that. So let's go up to the headstock. Original nut, of course original frets. Uh, you can see that there's a bit of kind of fading, you know, on the chrome, on the machine heads, and even on the posts. Uh, as far as function goes, they are totally mint shape, the, uh, the tuners. The little bit of blushing, well, you know, that would be the buyer's call, I suppose. Okay, let's take a close look at the back. We've got a couple of little specks here and, you know, some sort of little stress marks. There are some very faint sort of fissures going across the grain and that's normal, an instrument of this vintage. And the other thing that's unusual, look at the neck. That's one solid slab sawn piece of maple. And look at the finish. I mean, the finish isn't even more. There's still a high gloss finish on this thing. This didn't see a lot of playing time. The lay of the neck is nothing short of perfect. I'll plug it in in a second. I'll let you hear it. Here's a look at the back of the machine heads. You can see they've got that sort of faded look, but uh, they are airtight. The machining is super tight. Okay, for the Uber collector types, the R is missing on the fender. This is the original case on that fender plaque. So let's open it up. Let's take a look at the inside. There's the inside of the original case, and look at this. The original fender strap, the original fender polishing cloth. Man, this thing is <laughs> as close to original as you could possibly get. 1971, so there you go. Ken did mention that he's considering selling it. Ken is a very accomplished kind of B3 guy, you know, a la Jimmy Smith R&B organist, and he bought this many years ago with the idea of sort of playing bass, but he never really got around to it. He just hung on to this thing forever, and that's why it's in this type of condition. Incredible, actually. I did make up my proverbial self-adjusting radius gauge, so we've got a perfect match to that very high fingerboard radius. And so if you think this is something you might be interested in purchasing, zip me an email. Let me know. Okay, we've got the under the ashtray rubber mute in there. Because originally these were played, you know, people played with their thumb back in the, in the 
1950s when they first came out, so even that original finger catch is still there. Pretty astounding, really, that all these parts, original parts and screws and covers and everything's there, the little strap and the, the polishing cloth that came with the thing. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm going to play just a little bit with that rubber mute in place on the uh, bridge ashtray, and you can listen to that. That's with the mute, and this, of course, is without the mute. Mm -hmm. 